see all of us gathered here thus far. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice and be glad. glad. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Loving God, our eternal Father, we worship you this morning. We glorify your name. We honor you. For you are worthy of all praise. All praise belongs to you. You are the great creator of this world and you have sustained this world ever since you brought it into being. You're sovereign. And we praise you that you are omnipresent. You are present with us everywhere we go. You are present with all your people around this world. What a mighty God you are. You are all knowledgeable. And all powerful. And you are our Father. Lord, today we recall your faithfulness. Thank you that you walk with us every day. That you are with us always. We proclaim that your promises are true and faithful. And your goodness and your love never fail. Someone writes a song, he never fails me yet, he never fails me. Jesus never fails. In this moment we come to you and lay our lives before you. We lay our secret sins before you. We lay before you our public sins, our individual sins and the sin of this nation. We lay them before you, O oh God, and we ask for your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Cleanse us. Yes, wash us. And make us clean. So that we can receive the gifts, the blessings, your Holy Spirit. May he be our lead and teacher today. Your beauty and your majesty are beyond compare. And on this day, this morning, we join with those who worship you, O Lord, and confess you as their Lord. From generation past and present, and with all of the angels that sing in heaven, of your greatness and your splendor. Lord, we adore you. We love you. We bow down before you and worship you. These mercies we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church say, Amen. Amen.
Heavenly Father and our God, we, your humble servants, come before you this morning in need of hope. Hope for tomorrow. Hope in troublesome times. Hope in time of illness. Hope in time of despair. And as it were, hope for people who are going through the blues. There are times when we feel helpless. There are times when we feel weak. We ask for your strength, and we ask that you will give us positive outlook on life, that we would put an end to the gloom and do outlook on life. We need hope for love and kindness. We need hope for peace. We need hope that our family will be happy. And that as we go through difficult times, we know the God we serve. We know the God of Abraham and Isaac and Joseph and Jacob. Yes, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us his only Son, that we may have life, and that we may have it in all its abundance. Help us to walk in your light as we go through this world of death. Thank you for the peace we have, the peace that we now experience. You promise to give peace. You say that in this world we may have, and we will have problems, but we have good cheer because you have overcome the world. We thank you for calling us to be peacemakers and the salt of the earth. And you want us to make peace wherever we can. So we ask you that you would teach us to be peacemakers and that we'll walk in a manner that reflects the wondrous peace that is given through your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, for those who struggle this morning with sickness, with anger, with doubt, with frustration, with guilt, with a sense of helplessness. Those who suffer with pain and regrets and sadness. Your Holy Word tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love God. We're calling to his purpose. And that means that you make all things work for the good purpose in our lives, even when we do not understand. Remind us of your invitation. Come unto me, all who labor, and I have lived. Remind us of the words of Peter Castolio Kills upon him because he cares. And of the assurance that goes with it because you care for us. Father, we thank you because you have given to us the authority 
to overcome sickness and problems and disease. In your name, by the stripes of Jesus, we declare that we are healed, even now. These mercies we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus. Yeah. 
She served as a dean, she served as provost, and now she is superintendent 
of uh, a statewide charter school district, all of Pennsylvania. So we, we probably. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> so after the choir, the next voice you will hear is that of Dr. Deborah Lee Gordon. Give her a hand. this week. Because in today's world, it seems that we are constantly battling the unforeseen. We are bombarded by negativity, fear, and uncertainty at every turn. And it's easy to get overwhelmed. 
but we are not alone in this battle. Amen. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, reminds us of a simple but compelling truth that we are or we can be equipped for this battle. Mm. We should have no problem connecting here because this passage could very well have been written today to us, to the church, to the body of Christ. I see this actually as a two-part passage. For me, verses 10 to 13 are where we stand alert and firm and face our enemy. And 14 to 17 is where we fight. So we are going to both stand firm and fight as we are instructed, instructed through this scripture. Hallelujah. The Lord has given us spiritual armor that allow us to withstand powerful attacks and live out God's promises. This passage addresses both the Christian's warfare and the Apostle Paul's plea to us regarding that warfare. It refers to the position of the church in this world. Paul advises us that we should prepare for battle, for conflict, for war. We know that war is a terrible thing. Just take a look at what's going on in the world today. The unfortunate truth is that you can't be at war and expect no casualties. War involves more than just those engaged in the battle. In war, an entire nation is at risk. Mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, families and friends, strangers and loved ones, all are affected in war. Nobody is exempt. The same holds true in spiritual warfare. Now, as human beings, as people, we can generally see the enemy. And when you can see the enemy, you can guess where he's likely to be, or guess where he's likely to hide, or what he's likely to do, or how he's likely to attack. This helps us develop a strategy, a defense, if you will, Paul's attempt here is to tell us that as Christians, there's another situation at hand. The intriguing thing here is that he's not warning us to wrestle human combatants. He is making us aware of another kind of wrestling match that's likely to take place. He's admonishing Christians to prepare for war with evil and the demonic forces over which we can only be victorious from power from on high with the aid that God gives us at our disposal through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now the beauty here is that Paul gives us the strategy for the spiritual battle that he told us will ensue. Not might, but will. Just in case we don't see it, when we get to Matthew 26, 41, where Jesus told Peter to watch, meaning stand guard and pray that ye not enter into temptation because as we know, the spirit is willing, 
but the flesh is weak. Just in case we miss that, Paul comes at it here. This time with a strategy where we are wrapped, dressed, encased in a battle uniform. We align ourselves with God and prepare to oppose evil when we have on the battle regalia, the armor of God. In verse 11, Paul talks to the whole armor of God. Keep that word whole in mind because that's going to be important again. Whole, all, entire, complete. This is important because the armor of God represents a divine set of tools meant to prepare us to stand firm against the challenges and adversities that we will face in life. The armor we are about to outline must be worn in its entirety. That's whole again. Keep that in mind. It's a all or none. Part of it alone, all by itself, won't do. We need the whole armor of God. For our understanding, I believe Paul lays this out like that of a Roman soldier. Likely, those who kept watch over him while he was in prison for preaching the gospel. And pay attention. When you get back to the book of Isaiah, these important elements are laid out there as well. So if you got good man, good command of the scripture, you can't miss it. Let's look at the six part arm of God, or Paul describes, because each part plays an important role, as you will see. So he first talks about the belt of truth, the foundation of our spiritual strength, the footing, if you will, that solid underpin. This holds everything together, helps us discern right from wrong. This spiritual belt plays a role much like guarding our soft but vital organs. Is that what a belt does? It makes us ready for battle. We must be grounded in the word for this battle. The breastplate of righteousness. Just like the belt protects our soft organs, the breastplate also offers a specialized protection. It covers and protects the heart, the center of our feelings and our emotions. It protects our mind. Righteousness is much more than just doing good. Righteousness is about being in right relationship with God. And that begins in the heart and in the mind. Shoes of peace. The shoes of peace represent preparation for the gospel of truth. This is feet equipped with shoes for marching, always ready, a promptitude of service. Yeah. Further, our gospel shoes represent our commitment to peace, restoration, grace, and more importantly, forgiveness. Here we're talking about forgiving those that we love and those we find it a little difficult to love. <laughs> Our gospel shoes prepare us for readiness. Readiness to move and act in ways that promote peace, 
and reconciliation. Shield of faith. The shield protects us from the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield is for defense, to stop the progress of evil. It protects us from doubts and fears, to help us hold on to our trust in God's promises. The helmet of salvation, this keeps us mindful of the saving power of Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. Understanding and embracing our salvation keeps us clear and focused. And the sword of the spirit, the powerful weapon of Christ's word. You will notice that this is the only office, offensive message or offensive met a weapon in the armor. So when we think about that offensive weapon, well, what really does it do? It gives us spiritual authority to combat spiritual deception. The word prepares us to recognize false teaching. Does it align with the word of God or not? It fortifies us to avoid temptation. And it keeps us strong and grounded because that is our foundation. The sword gives us the precision and power we need to, we need for direct engagement. A firm handling of the sword allows us to confront and dismantle arguments and lies. This important instrument and in our offensive strategy provides protective measures for the body as a whole through teaching and encouraging others and by strengthening us to assert the truth. The sword emphasizes the importance of spiritual engagement daily in the Christian life. So through prayer, study, and meditation, we can wield our sword and cut through the negativity fear, and uncertainty that comes our way. Hallelujah. And to encourage others along the journey. So what will this armor do? Well, it will protect you. It will keep you focused on Christ the Savior. It will help you stand against evil. Now, anything as important as this armor requires maintenance. So how do we maintain this? We maintain it through prayer and supplication. Prayer is inspired by the Spirit of Christ. Sincere, honest prayer filled with thanksgiving and through our worship. Now, remember, putting on the the armor isn't a once-and-done event or activity. It must be done daily through our faithful prayer, by studying the Word and engaging and encouraging others in it. And in our fellowship with the body of Christ, encouraging one another throughout our spiritual journey. The battle is real. But so is the promise of victory. Amen. We are not meant to fight this battle alone. I hope you're still hanging on to that word whole. Because we have been provided all 
that we need the whole armor of God, all six pieces, to stand strong and overcome the forces of darkness. Put on the armor of God daily and encourage the body of believers to join you in doing so through daily prayer, study, and meditation. Trusting in his power and strength to lead us to victory. Let us be the ones to proclaim God's truth and the reality of victory through him. In this world, it so desperately needs it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good work. Somebody always asks the preacher woman. <laughs>
the song. It was at a stadium back home, and about 8,000 of us were there, and a choir of 100. And Goose Pimp recovered my body. <laughs> and just long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature snatch. And as the fuse a quickening ray, I woke the dungeon. <coughs> Flame with night, my chains fell off. My heart was free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I wanted to leave this day, leave this place here, feeling free. Of those whom Christ set free are free indeed. Don't get out here this morning with any chain. My chain fell off. My heart was free. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for the word. Reminds us that we can be victorious. For the battle tools that you have given to us. May we follow your instructions as we use St. Paul as your servant to declare that to us. Thank you for today. Thank you for all who worship with us today. And thank you for the fellowship we shall share at the end of this worship in our picnic that will bless everything we say and do this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.